Global cases of COVID-19 have unfortunately passed 4 million and the death toll stands at nearly 300,000. The third coronavirus epidemic in 17 years. COVID-19 is far more damaging than its predecessor, SARS in 2003 and MERS in 2014. It is also more deadly. Symptoms take longer to appear and the virus produces a large number of asymptomatic cases. Some scientists now say that this is why there are so many infections around the world and why it has spread uh, so fast. So is the coronavirus getting more deadly? To find out uh, for our first episode of Listen to the Scientists, I'm very pleased to be joined by Zhang Hongtao, Research Associate Professor of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. Um, Professor Zhang, welcome to our program. In other interviews, you said that asymptomatic infections are the main causes of the global spread of COVID-19. Uh, can you elaborate? Yeah, that's right. So if you think back uh, in January, uh, Wuhan is uh, the city is shut down. I mean, the main reason is there's asymptomatic uh, people uh, carrying the virus. That's why there's no way you can check the temperature. You, the only thing you can do is like uh, shutting down the city, right? So to prevent this to uh, pass to other people. And also recently, if you look at Singapore, Singapore has been doing a pretty good job controlling this, but suddenly they uh, found out there are uh, more than uh, 10,000, maybe 20,000 uh, people got infected. But mostly those people are uh, 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 workers with uh, working permit from other country. Uh, uh, mostly of them are asymptomatic. So they don't have any major symptom when they got infected and they when they living together in, in a dormitory stuff uh, like that, they kind of like easily pass to other people. So there's like a, a lot of these things going on. And, and also if you look at the US, uh, when they take a look at their uh, antibody test, and then they find out uh, in general, like in New York, they're uh, it's about like 20 people, 20% 20 of the people got uh, mm -hmm. already infected. So uh, the, the number is way more than uh, whatever the number they have uh, you know, confirmed by a nuclear uh, test. Well, uh, many people are asking this question, uh, you know, talking about SARS in 2003 and MERS in 2014. Uh, they seem to have lasted longer, though we don't know. Um, how long COVID-19 will last, um, but they certainly haven't infected that many people. Uh, how do you see this um, in comparison? I think if you look at uh, look at the SARS, so when people got infected, they quickly show in symptom. If you think back, what happened like 17 years ago, uh, when people get in to the uh, going on board to the flight, and then if they got infected on the flight, when they coming off the flight. Uh, they're already showing symptoms, they already have temperature. So they can be easily picked up uh, by their temperature checking. So, and then, you know, they can uh, be quickly quarantined and then prevented uh, from passing uh, the virus to other people. But uh, for uh, COVID-19, it's difficult. You rarely see anything in the news that when people are getting off the flight, they're you know, one passenger infected many. So you don't see those kind of stuff. It's only because mostly when it got infected, people don't have any symptom. But meanwhile, they can already uh, produce in the virus and then infect other people. Well, you know, we always wanted to ask scientists, scientists, not politicians, not commentators about this question. Um, do you think it is conceivable? Is it possible that the coronavirus was uh, man-made um, from a Chinese lab. Um, th this is a kind of like a compound question. So, it, there, I've been, you know, telling this to a lot of people, you know, to my friends, to you know, people in the WeChat group from the beginning. It's unlikely this virus is made by people. I mean, it's not like other people; they don't know this. They think like scientists can do a lot of things, but. When you really doing this kind of like a, you know research, you know it's. I mean, I'm not saying there's like a zero chance. There's always a possibility, but the possibility is really, really rare. It's just impossible to make something like this. Um, that's my opinion from the beginning, and it's been always my opinion. So it's it's very unlikely this is being made by any 
scientists, I mean, not Chinese, not American, I don't think anybody is that capable of doing this kind of like stuff. And on the other side, you see there is a very, very big possibility of this virus coming out from nature by the combination of different virus from, uh, from bats and from pangolin, right? So, and the, similarly, you see SARS happened like 70 years ago. This is also from uh, wild animals. So it's, 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 if you look at the possibility is, uh, the possibility of this is coming from nature is really, really big. And this is, um, you know, almost you can say definitely it's just from nature. It's a kind of like disaster from nature. It's not like uh, some people made. Of course, like, you know, when you handling this kind of uh, situation, uh, by your reaction, you can either make this getting worse or make it, uh, you know, going um, to, to pass away quickly. So it's their human reaction may do something for this, but I don't think this is coming from a human-made uh, virus. Right. Then how do you look at uh, some American politicians' uh, claims that it is, uh, you know, if not man-made, uh, an accidental leak from a Wuhan lab? Uh, you know, uh, those politicians include... Uh, you know, President Donald Trump and uh, U.S. Secretary of State Mike, uh, Mike Pompeo? Well, as a scientist, when I say something, I always base it on uh, evidence. I don't know how politicians make those kind of allegations. I don't know if, uh, if they can say, they probably they can say whatever they want to say without any evidence, because if you ask them what's the evidence, they, you know, they won't tell you. It's just like, um, so when it happens to that, it's, it's hard to even talk to them. To, to those kind of like people, there's there's no basis of uh, communication on, on that kind of like issue. Well, in another interview, you talk about the role of globalization and human activities uh, in the spread of COVID-19. Um, can you elaborate? Um, so, in terms of like a globalization, it's not a real. In, I mean, the reason. I mean, it's only because you uh, like people more. Like they travel in much more, they can you know be in uh, Asia in one day and then uh, America in the next day or Europe you know the day after. But the major reason of this passing through so quickly is people stay in a kind of like closed room. If you think what happened in uh, you know some country is very obvious, like in um, Korea, uh, South Korea, it's like. Um, church activity when people going attend those um, religious religious group right they, when they go into the church with, with they have a big crowd inside the room and also in uh, Iran in those country it's the same thing when they go into those kind of like uh, activity that many people sitting together or sitting very closely inside the room it's a very good chance to pass this virus to other people quickly so and I've been saying uh, inside the room, and this is happening too in U.S. When uh, I think that's in the, uh, I think it's in the end of uh, February in Boston, uh, Biogen had this meeting, and then uh, there are like more about like 80 people got infected when they attended to this meeting. So it's always happened inside a room, and 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 then um, so. Uh, but on the other side, if this is outside. The, the chance of this passing to other people is is kind of like a reduced. If you look at uh, marathon in March in L uh, Los Angeles, right? The, there's like a big marathon event, but um, apparently there's not a major outbreak after that. Um, you know, ten or twenty thousand people marathon events. So it's this this virus is very tricky. It's but uh, if you if people want to avoid those other place inside their room without like a good circulation of the air, that's where the place that is most more like a dangerous. Well, we know that the coronavirus is um, could potentially be mutating very fast uh, genetically. Uh, in this regard, do you think even if we learn a whole lot about COVID-19 as we do, uh, you know, we can still not. Um, prevent a next coronavirus pandemic? Uh, I don't think so. Um, if you look at this virus, yes, it's mutating. It's kind of like a fast, but it's not to a point that fast enough to uh, change the vaccine. It's different from the flu, uh, flu virus. 
uh, influenza. So that virus is much more difficult. It's, and also it has like a many diff different type of uh, flu virus. They can do recombination quickly. They can produce something that's totally different. But uh, if you look at uh, coronavirus, the COVID-19, uh, it's mutating, but it's like a step by step. It's like a very tiny uh, baby step moving forward. So I don't think that will change uh, the, uh, the way it induces the antibody dramatically. So with the vaccine, with something, you can still control it. So it's different from the flu. All right, we have about 20 minutes left. Uh, your advice to the White House on how to contain the coronavirus in America? Well, it's hard. I mean, to a point, this is beyond a situation that, you know, what happened in China uh, in January. So the cases are mostly uh, uh, in a city, in Wuhan and in a province. Now in U.S., it's like already everywhere. So I agree, it's very difficult to do. There's no way you can lock down the city or lock down the, um, you know, completely. And, and plus, it's not the culture here. People, they don't they don't like this idea, like being locked down in the city. They, they you know, they're protesting uh, this kind of like stuff. But the Certainly, one thing it's I a different want culture, them to do it's is also that, different uh, systems. Um, Professor Zhang, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. And I also want to thank our viewers. Okay.